Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to edit and update the macro buttons inside the macro toolbar. Studio One comes with the ability of building your own custom macros, but they've gone ahead and created a number of already very useful macros to begin with. Some of these are very good, but some of them didn't fit with my workflow. So I wanted to change some of them so that it actually did what I wanted it to do. Let's dive into the DAW and see how we can edit a macro, including the button on the toolbar. So here we are inside the session. And if you don't already see it, you want to hit this button up on top and this will open up the macro toolbar. The one we're going to work on today is normalize and peaks at minus 12. Now normalization will analyze your audio and put the loudest point to zero dB FS. But I don't want that. I do want normalization, but I don't want it at zero dB. I also don't want it to then get moved down 12 dB because that's what this macro will do. It will normalize the loudest part to zero dB and then take everything and shrink it down to minus 12. I, in my workflow, would much rather have something like minus six or minus three. So how do we do this? Do we just hit normalize and peaks at minus 12 and then bump it up six or nine dB? Why don't we just edit the macro so that it does what we want and we don't have to worry about bumping it up afterwards. Here's how we do it. When I'm hovering over the button, I can right click. First, I'm gonna wanna edit the macro. So I'm going to go down to edit macro. Because I right clicked on the macro I wanna edit, it knows to automatically pull it up here. And you can see the two commands that happen within this macro, normalize audio and then edit volume two minus 12. That's not what I want. I actually want minus three. So I can go in here and now it is going to be minus three instead of minus 12. For organizational purposes, I'm also going to want to rename this one. So I'm just going to come up here and change minus 12 to minus three. I'll hit OK, and you may or may not see this pop up where it says normalize at minus three. Do you want to rename the macro file as well? Because that's the referenced file on your system. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. You don't necessarily need to, but maybe you should. This way, for your organization, you know which one you're working with. So there we go. We've already edited one of the Studio One pre-made macros, but our button hasn't changed. So how can we get this to update as well? Again, it's just as easy as right clicking and it's not apparent at first, but all you have to do is double click the name here. Then you can edit it and update it just like that. And now I have normalize and peaks at minus three. So let's go ahead and do that. This room track right here, you can see is not normalized. My signals are very low in comparison to my toms up here, which I've already done the normalization to. So let's go ahead and use the macro to normalize this track and set the peaks to minus three. Boom. With the click of a button, I now have a consistent level of my room mics that were normalized so that I know the volumes are consistent. Then the macro went ahead and took everything and just reduced it down by 3 dB. If we come to this center square here and click it and hold without moving, we can see that it's set to minus three with a difference of zero dB. The difference is if I was gonna start moving up and down. And that's all it takes. If you wanna alter the pre-made macros, you can just go up to any one of them, right click, edit the macro and edit the name. You can also go in and actually add more buttons for maybe some macros that you use that aren't in a macro toolbar or any one of the other pages of macro toolbars. Now you may have been asking while I was working on this, why I'm changing normalize and peaks to minus three. I do normalization, especially on vocal tracks that I get, because I want them to be consistent. This way, when I set up my compressor, my gain staging into the compressor is also consistent. I don't want there to be different sections of the vocals where one is very quiet and the other section might be very loud. So making the compressor work hard on that section, but not nearly as hard on the other. I want everything to be consistent this way when I set it, it's where I want it to be. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.